So this is a pretty cool video I get to make. This is my first time watching this point playback. It's about five minutes. I have yet to watch this. I lived it, and that's the only experience I have with it. So this is a little bit of a live reaction, kind of live revisiting of how I play points and constructing them. So here, sitting in a groove of cross court. Let's see when the rhythm gets broken. Oh, right there. Down the line, finish it up. Get a little bit more than I wanted to. So that's something that I would call Miss Opportunity Offense, or Moo. Can't help but ignore, but it's M-O-O. -O, Miss Opportunity Offense. This is going to be uncut, so I'm going to have a little more time to talk about what's going on at the points. And at that point, I'm just trying to uh, clear my head of that last um, point. Just get ready for the next one. Catch my breath. So I'm going down the line early, and I'm able to get up to the net in the process. Again, going down the line when you're go, uh, when you're getting up and transitioning to the net is actually pretty key. And you have to have a really good reason to go cross court if you're approaching cross court. You gotta have a really good reason, really good ball to do that. It's very risky if you don't. So right there, I was wrong with my prediction, but I was able to fix it with my forehand. I'm not sure if I called that in or out, honestly. Right there. So again, I, my pre-prediction was wrong, but actually still very convenient for me. It worked out well. Right here, missed opportunity offense. That half volley, as you saw in the previous video, or, or maybe I didn't post it, maybe you haven't seen it. There was a half volley in there that I successfully won the point on, but I talked about my consistency was not not my favorite. It was a really difficult shot to, to make. So right here, sticking with the cross court rally. He chose not to approach or try to take a control the point there now perhaps that was a missed opportunity perhaps that was not a smart choice perhaps it was I, I you know watching back don't think I would do much different right there Ben hit it out easy point back in my favor so I guess if anything is um, if it's if it's worth anything I guess right there it didn't matter all in all as well eye for an eye right there got a kind of a high forehand pretty typical just sit in the groove hit his backhand now I'm gonna give him a forehand but again I'm giving him a forehand on my rhythm and on my terms so I get him to pop up despite again that's his favorite shot I know Ben pretty well he's a lefty he's one of my lessons I play against him at least once a week he's got a pretty good forehand but I like to pick on his backhand with my forehand as I would with any lefty it's not not personal But I'm again. I'm more than comfortable giving him forehands because something like that. I'm gonna make him overhead. I'm gonna get. I'm gonna make him get antsy, impatient, and I'm gonna try to do that to any any opponent. Again, lefty or righty, is more than ever. I'm willing to be patient, play a little bit more of a rhythm and a kind of a uh, a clean rally point until somebody makes a mistake, and that's gonna happen right there again. I got a chance to go into the net. I got a chance to feed his backhand in favor of the chance to pop up or again at least bet on the fact that he's probably going to hit it short and I'm going to go collect my winnings up at the net make him work really hard even if he does get there it's uh, I wouldn't say futile you always want to make your opponent hit another one on defense but at a certain point too you have to risk or you have to understand the risk reward um, maybe it's a long day maybe you're in high school you're playing a couple matches I've been there before and you have to realize when, when you know, the 2% chance of winning shots are maybe a waste of energy and maybe when there's a 20% chance of getting back to neutral or, or taking the point off of somebody on offense in control, maybe it is worth it. Um, but, you know, you'll see this in on TV too is sometimes, you know, maybe if they, w if they sold out they could get there, but it, the, 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 the point is pretty much too far gone to make it worth it, their energy long term. And I don't think that's talked about enough. Is when do you conserve energy? When do you keep going for it? And if you're somebody like Rafa, you know, that that isn't a conversation. But I think for most players, if you're too far gone, I don't think there's any ball you shouldn't chase. But being okay with the fact that your opponent outplayed you. I don't think that tennis is put in the spotlight enough for the class and the sportsmanship of understanding when your opponent made a good play, when they constructed a point really well, 
You have to honor that. You have to understand when you played a point well, you played it by the book, and that usually does help. And you have to understand, too, again, when your opponent played it by the book, they got you going, and maybe it wasn't the most complex thing that they did, but it worked. It was simple, it was honest, and we're all human. We're going to make mistakes. It's about how we kind of capitalize and how we respond and how we navigate those moments of opportunity. Thanks again so much for watching. I look forward to seeing you back on the court. Hopefully this helps you. And enjoy every match you get to play.